Hi and welcome to CDHTV Gameplay. In this match, I'm playing Plarg and Asiri. Now we do have Etali, Primal Storm inside the deck, but Plarg is basically a cheaper version of it. In general, it is an Underworld Breach deck that is just stealing cards from your opponents. Adatari is also with us playing his signature commander, Rocco. This is a turbo combo deck that is trying to achieve a form of Wincon with the Kikijiki and infinite creatures. Basically using Rocco to assemble a combo with it. Pontus is with us playing his Malcolm and Smasher. It is basically a Grixis Glinton Malcolm deck, more or less. That also includes his signature cards like Ad Nauseum. Elf Cruz is with us playing Cisei. Now he's doing a different tweak to this deck, he's adding clones. Because with clones he can get copies of our commanders and gain color identity that way. But otherwise it's just a 5 color Turbo Adnos, fast Pyrinthrobus deck. That also plays things similar to Underworld Breach, so it's something of a 5 color Grixis deck with a Cisse clone tweak. And with that, let's take a look at some opening hands. Okay, first one. Yeah, this is a no lander. That doesn't make sense to keep, so I'll mulligan. There we go. This is a not so hand. Hopefully draw land. If we draw land, this is like actually crazy. We have a turn one fish going first. That's always good, especially in I guess this is this is a more creature heavy pod, so it's not the best. But it's all it's always like a good enough thing to at least consider. Uh, but we also have a turn one commander, and if we draw a second land, we have a turn one. Grim Monolith, uh, Grim Monolith as well. And then we have a turn to Dockside, and we have Fierce backup for getting around. So yeah, this is amazing. I'm very happy. I'm keeping this. Go ahead, Atari. This is my opening hand. We can get out a turn one Mana Dork, turn two Somber Walt Sage, and Somber Walt Sage is a pretty good card. Let me think about this. Turn one birds, turn two Somberwald Sage, turn three, four, five, six, seven. Turn three, we don't have the win, but we do technically have a Rocco for three to get Ranger Captain EO, so it's a protected win. We also have the ability to have a red elemental blast, but I don't think that's very necessary. I think this is a slower hand, it's much safer. I am going second, so it's not the end of the world, but we are going up against what is essentially a Grixis deck that's terrible as well. I'm going to go ahead and just keep this hand anyway. I actually like it. We have a turn one bird, turn two somber world, so we could always try to just Rocco for any type of card, even though Ranger Captain might get countered, we still have Rain uh, somber world sage. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this, even if it's a turn four win, but I'm okay with a protected turn four win. So this is my first seven. It's pretty good, a lot of mana, but nothing else. It's very difficult to not keep a hand like this. So I have CSA turn one. It's just so much mana, right? Then I can have a CSA activation, but then I get what? I get a Ragavan. Not sure if that's good, but it's very difficult to not take this. Because kind of any top deck or... I think I'm going to risk. Would you risk? I'm going to risk. I'm going to keep my first seven. So this first seven is not that good. Like, we want something more explosive. We want to develop our commander early in the game. This hand does not do that. So we're going to mulligan. Also, Underworld Bridge, something you'd rather draw later. I don't think I want to sit with it in my hand because someone could just wheel it down to my graveyard. This looks pretty good. I do like it. It is a Soul Ring, it is Simeon Spirit Guide. We're lacking a second land, that's a little bit annoying actually. If we would have had a second land, this would be a turn to Commander. We also have the Invasion of Caldheim in our hand, I kind of like that one. I think I'm gonna gamble and keep this. We're also not that far away from winning with Dual Custom Mage, because we have, okay, we don't really need Heat Shimmer and Twin Flame both together, but it's fine. We can actually get a Dockside from someone if we're lucky. And or we could get something else. With but like if you just top deck a land, we're golden. And in the end, I think I'm going to keep this hand actually. This is definitely something you could toss away. If I don't get a turn to Commander, I think I'm going to go turn to Invasion of Caldheim instead. Pitching this in Simeon Spirit Guide to get this into play. 
So it's a hand that will develop and do something. It's a little bit of a risky hand, but I'm gonna gamble on it. And with that, let's start the match. Take my turn. Land for turn will be this City of Brass. I'll tap it and take damage to cast this Mystic Romara. Mystic Romara resolves. I will cast this Jeweled Lotus. I would like to crack it for my commander Malcolm. I would then like to cast a Mox Diamond. <laughs> Pitching this Scalding Tarn. And that's it. That, that's like enough for me. Uh, I think this is okay. Uh, yeah, pass turn. Draw for turn. Scalding Tarn. And I will crack it for a Taiga. Going down to 39. And then I will play a Birds of Paradise. And I will go to my end step. A draw for turn. So now with that Miss Remora, play this mana crypt. You can draw. Thank you. I uh, will float one mana. This crew land land for turn. Cassie say. And I'm gonna exile Simon Spirit Guide and I will use my floating mana cast a Magda. If that's okay, a pass turn. And I thought yeah. Pontus had a good turn. I will draw a card for turn. Mountain, land drop, tap that thing. Soldering, you can draw. After soldering, I will exile this Simeon Spirit Guide for a red. Tap this one for two colorless. And I'm gonna cast a Professional Phase Breaker. No more fish feeding here, and I pass the turn after this. Go to my turn. Upkeep, I'll pay for fish. Draw for turn. Land return would be a Polluted Delta. I would like to crack it, losing life. Finding a underground sea. Tap two to cast a Grim Monolith. Move to combat. I would like to hit uh, hit LF Cruise for two. No blocks. Trigger, make a treasure. Then I would like to pass the turn. Go to my turn. Draw for turn. Play a Stomping Grounds and take two damage. Tap three, four, Somber Wild Sage. All right, I will move to my end step as well. I'm going to just move direct to combat. Attack Pontus with both Magda and Sisse. And on attacking Magda, we'll create a treasure. Create a treasure here. No blocks, take five. Play this March Flats. Pass the turn. Untap and draw a card. Lotus Petal. Combat. Professional Face Breaker is punching LF Cruz. The Sisse player feels kind of bad punching Sisse, but that's... Mm. Gotta make sure that the Adnosum stays low. No blocks. I create a treasure because of that. And once again, I really think this showcase why we love Plarg. A little bit more than Altali, because this is exactly 5 mana, so I'm gonna... Cost... Plarg and Nasiri. In the beginning of my next upkeep, cool things will happen. So from here, I will pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, official trigger. I'll tap Grim Monolith to pay two. Then still in my upkeep, I'll use the one floating from Grim Monolith and this Ungon Sea to cast a Tainted Pact. Tainted Pact resolves. Let's start flipping. Reveal a Op Agent, Lotus Battle, Monk Amber, Morphic Pool, Dispel, Monk's Opal, Yagwil, Fall Ritual, Brain Freeze, Pact, Rollick, doesn't really do anything. Claw, Red Blast, Command Tower, Twister, Windfall. Oh, Master Mind in, in the stick. Git Probe, Necro, Notion Thief, Grim Tutor, Muscle Tutor, Rustic, Dark Richeska's Will, Fire Convenant, Sol Ring. This isn't going as expected. I'm expecting that your fast Oracle is going to be like your last card. <laughs> Adnas, we can be without. Talisman, Foothills, LED is gone. Yeah, Brain Freeze is gone too already. Your Breach combo is yeah. su super bad. Breach combo is pretty bad, yeah. Breach is a bad card, right? Defense grid. Really bad. Ramp Tutor. Oh, wait, Ramp Tutor works because I'm still in upkeep. I'll stop on Ramp Tutor. Then, still in my upkeep, I will cast the Ramp Tutor. Last priority. I will pass two. Ram Tutor resolves. I will put this card here on top of my deck and lose two life. Move to draw the Flood Strand and I would like to fetch. Finding a Volcanic Island. Tab two to cast this Dockside. Dockside to be on stack. Dockside will make three treasures. 
I'll tap one, taking damage, and pay two treasures to cast this Glintorn Buccaneer. Glintorn resolves and move to combat. I'll declare Malcolm and Glintorn as attackers coming at LF Cruise. So Malcolm and Glintorn will both connect to Cruise. Technically, this is a bad attack, but it should be fine. So Malcolm will trigger once because I attack one player with two pirates. I should have split them up. Uh, but I'll make a treasure. Then I'll crack two treasures to discard this Wheel of Fortune to Glintorn. Glintorn will trigger, and I'll deal one damage to each of my opponents. This will trigger Malcolm three times, making three treasures. And I can repeat this to loot through my library and deal 32 damage to my opponents because I have less life, less cards in deck than they have life. Um, but I'll generate plus one treasure for each iteration. But once my opponents are low, I'll just cast a Thassa Circle to win the game. Well, that game went rather fast. So, well, we recorded a game too. Let's take a look at some uh, new opening hands. We have only one land, but Pontos probably wants to play some rocks. So I can go Tundra, Mana Vault, Thelwar Stone in Remora. I think I'm going to do that. It's very difficult to not keep that because that essentially a Thelwar Stone is our second uh, Mana Surge. Um, yeah, I'm keeping my first seven. So this is our first opening hand. This hand is actually just not playable at all because our guy's cradle does nothing if we don't have a creature out. And we do have technically a ritual to, you know, turn one arcane signet, we get lucky and draw into a free mana source or a land. I'm just gonna pitch this hand anyway, it just seems too RNG. This is our second hand. This is actually significantly better because we have a turn one soul ring signet. We have a turn one soul ring to signet, or talisman, sorry. We have turn one soul ring to talisman. And then turn two, we can technically play Birthing Pod and see if we can bait out a counter spell. That seems questionable. I don't know. This feels like a good hand, but at the same time, it feels like a very, very slow hand. I don't know how to... My gut instinct is telling me not to keep this hand because it doesn't look like I have a turn three or even a turn four win. But let me think about this. We have four mana. We cannot rock for anything because we need three colored sources. I think I'm going to go down to six. This hand is unplayable because we don't have a land. We'll go down to five. This hand is okay. We have three mana on turn two, but not really anything to do with it. But we do have Arena Rector. Well, technically we have Carpet of Flowers. We do have blue players in our pod. I think I'm going to have to greed this hand. Maybe see if I can get out a Rocco for Dockside, a Rocco for Grand Abolisher, and then Arena Wreck. We don't have a Mountain to cast Thunderclap for free. I feel like I have to keep this because I don't want to go down to four. So I think I'm going to keep this and I'm going to bottom the Eladomri's Call for sure. And I'm going to bottom something else. I most likely am going to have to bottom maybe the Arena Rector. Technically, Treasonous Ogre gets us enough mana to get there anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. So this hand is su surprisingly keepable, uh, not on the first seven. I I'll never keep this on the first seven, but like out of five, this hand is pretty solid. Just because like Malcolm solves most of our problems. Um, but since we're on the first seven, this is not the hand I'm going to gamble on, or not even gamble on. It's just too bad for first seven, so I'll look for something better. Okay, uh, we have the turn one fish again. So last game kind of showed me that turn one fish isn't that valuable. Uh, I got to draw like three, four cards of it, so it's not like a bad card. Uh, of course, fish isn't bad. So both Cissei and uh, Rocco are pretty creature-based. So this hand doesn't really do anything unless fish kind of carries it by the fact that we just have one land. We have Dockside, which is nice. We have like a bunch of mana. Like this is a decent hand. But I'm a mulligan it because it, it it's still just basically the turn on fish and unless it draws 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 us into things, uh, it doesn't really get us there. So I could gamble on fish being good, but being in third seat, being two creature heavy decks, I played a bit safer and mulligan. Go to six. Yeah, this sound is pretty good. Uh, we have a turn one fairy mastermind. We have probably Enough mana for an Ocean Thief by turn three. Uh, we can vamp two. We can vamp two to turn one. So this is turn one. Malcolm even. That's even better. 
yeah, this is a pretty solid ham. Hopefully we can get enough mana to like push out the Fire Mastermind and the Notion Thief to start kind of grinding. Because this is a kind of grindy hand. Yeah, it's still pretty solid hand, so let's keep it. Go ahead, Mons. Our first seven has a Birgi turn two. But we don't really have anything to develop forward afterwards with Birgi. It could be cool to just storm off with Birgi and do value things, but we don't have a hand that is going to do that, so we're going to mulligan this one. Once again, we have... Birgi turn 2 with the City of Traitors. But we're getting stuck here. Not looking great. We are going to mulligan again. Actually, we could keep this hand, honestly. Because with the Twin Flame, if someone is putting like a good card into play, we gain mana from Birgi. If that good card is a Dockside, we get a lot of mana. But it's just sitting here and doing nothing. Putting Birgi into play and there's a risk we're just passing turn for a while. So we're going to go down to 6. So with our commander, we have value. So all we need is just mana, and this hand contains basically nothing more than mana. Heretic Ritual, Mana Rock, Lotus Petal, the Chromox, and Free Lands. War Room is also pretty good. It's a card draw effect for a later game. We're absolutely keeping this. And I think we're going to bottom this shrine to Nyx. And uh, that's our hand. We'll get our commander to play at the very least. And with that, let's start the match. Pre-game, I'll put in this Jamson Karen exiling this Cabal Ritual. Okay, guys, so I'm going to draw my card for turn, but I, it was a very risky hand. I just realized after I decided my mulligan, because my Felwar Stone wouldn't tap for anything, I wouldn't be able to cast my Mystic Remora, because the Felwar Stone is not Arcane Signet, you know that, right? So it was a mistake, but thanks to Pontus, he has a gemstone cavern, so now everything goes according to plan. We got, we got a bit lucky here. Tundra, exile this Simeon Spirit Guide. I probably shouldn't do this. I'm playing wrong, but that, that's okay. That's okay. Mana Vault. Tap Mana Vault for three. Floating one colorless. Cast a Felwar Stone. Because... Uh, You're Mr. welcome, Mora. my friend. Not you uh, too. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> I, yeah. I respond to Mystic Romora. Tap jumps the caverns to cast this round titter. I have a response. I'm gonna fluster storm that. Oh pff. it's gone. With that I pass a turn. Play Ancient Tomb. I will tap it to lose two life, and I will cast Talisman of Impulse. I will tap Talisman of Impulse for one green taking another damage, and I will play carpet of flowers go to my second main phase and get a mana but i will not cast anything and i will proceed to end step take my turn i'll play blue delta Elfrin. i would like to fetch finding a ungron sea and then i'll pass the turn draw a card chromox imprinting mm. a heretic ritual and you can draw a card my friend land is a homeward path We'll tap two to cast this two mana rock that taps for a colorless response to your fish trigger it's it's fine it's fine it's fine i'm just gonna cast this fire mastermind so i also draw a card and then i'm gonna hold back not feed anymore and pass the turn on top first a draw for turn tropical pass the turn draw for turn i'll make a white oh you have two islands i didn't see that yeah i make i'll make two red sorry or three, sorry, three total to cast Treasonous Ogre. I will pay six life for two red and cast Talisman of Unity. You can draw. You have one white floating, right? Yeah. I have to pass. I'll pay another nine life for three red. I'm going to Rocco for two. Dockside ETB? No response. I'll get five treasures. I'll cast Kiki Jiki. I pass. I pass. Pass priority. I'll tap Kiki Jiki, targeting Dockside, to make five more treasures. To go to nine. Three of my treasures to cast Thunderclap. Clap Rocco. It just deals three damage to him. Yeah, you can draw. Rocco goes back to the command zone. I will Rocco for one. Because I'm just going to get Wirewood. Activate Wirewood. To bring Rocco back to my hand as the cost, targeting Kiki Jiki for the untap. I will tap Kiki Jiki, targeting Dockside, to make five treasures. Okay, Dockside token comes in, it'll make ETB trigger, it'll make five treasures. I'll pay three life from Treasonous Ogre to float one red, going down to three, 
and I'll sack off five of my treasures as well to cast Rocco for X equals three. A tap for the black for the demonic consultation. It's, it's not that kind of interaction that you want to simply just throw away, right? Mind break trap, mind break trap. Yeah. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, Sakashima, Breach, Opal, Kitten. Yeah, that's that's a, a big problem here. So, Worldly Tutor, Savines, Kina. Probably cannot win this game anymore. Uh, Soul Ring, uh, Thoracle, City of Traitors, Teferi, Mox, Phantasm Image, Imposter Mac, LED, Poseidon, Imperial Seal. Tainted Pact, Enlightened Tutor, Emil, Pact of Negation, Ragavan, Dark Ritual, Abolest, Fairy Mastermind, Volk, Mark Tutor, Cold Delta, Lots Petal, Ay, Ay, Chain of Vapor, Arcane Signets, Gemstone. Hope I have a Mind Break Trap in this deck. Ad Nauseam, Command Tower, Smothering Tide, Sakashima. Brain Freeze, Chromox, and Scrubland, Mind Break Trap. Okay, I have 19 cards left in my deck. Attempt to Mind Break Trap. I'm going to go to combat. Yeah, I, I, I take it. All right, I'll go to my end step in the Token Exiles. Pass the turn. City of Brass, round turn. Pontus, you should okay. attack him in the air, because if he goes down to two, he can't use his Ancient Tomb. Move combat. Hit you for two in the air, I'll die. Take two. Then, in my post combat main phase, I'll pay two for this dark side. Dark side resolves. I'll make, your I'll make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight treasures. I'll pass. War room. I will play this Mox Upol. I don't think I care about the fish drawing cards anymore, so go ahead. Now we have exactly five magic mana for my magical commander turn two Plarg and then I pass the turn. So I'm paying for fish, draw for turn, play this mana confluence, because fetch lands, I don't know if I have targets. Move to my end step. I will take my turn and draw. Ironic. I will play City Brass. Well, the land is useless. Play I will Kiki Jiki targeting the Dockside. I will make a copy of Dockside. Dockside ETB on the stack. I'll respond to ETB. Sure. Pay four to cast this Notion Thief. Notion Thief, okay. I'll crack four treasures to make each of us draw a card with very most of mind. I would like to draw okay. four. Sure. I'll draw four. And that's it. Okay, so Dockside should be making three, four, five, six. Six yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I'm going to rock off for one for sure. Seven. Uh, I'm going to get Tinder Wall. I'm going to bring... Rocco back to my hand with Wirewood Symbiote to untap Kiki Jiki. I will tap Kiki Jiki, targeting Dockside to make another six treasures. Tinderwall for two red, and I'll sack the six treasures for whatever. I will Rocco for, I mean, I guess I'll just Rocco for three. I will get out Village Bellringer, untaps everything and presents an infinite loop with Kiki Jiki. I will make 100 or not 100, 300 village, village bell ringer tokens, and I'll swing 100 of each of you. Dead. Ouch. GG. Yeah, first game went great. Second game, sadly, didn't draw any response off the draw four, but that's how it goes. Good game. I just want to trigger my commander once. Just once. Yeah, we had a good start, uh, but unfortunately, you have to cast that consultation to stop the win, and then just, you know, our the only piece of interaction that we had couldn't stop Rocco. Good game. So this game is a pretty good example of Rocco's strengths. If usually you want to hold removal into the last point when dealing with people's win cons, but with Rocco, if you don't stop them early, they just amass this board state that just combos into another win the following turn, and you just keep having to have interaction to deal with them. But all in all, Treasonous Ogre is my best friend. I love him.